Hey everyone, Ollie here. So, we have the new MacBooks. I have the 14 inch one here, I have the 16 inch one here. Both of these are base model specs, so uh, M1 Pro on both of them, but the 14 inch has the M1 Pro 8 core and the 16 inch has the M1 Pro 10 core. Um, I just wanted to go through unboxing and stuff, show you the differences compared to my current MacBook. I'll actually get my MacBook in a sec, sort of compare them, but I have been so looking forward to these. Proper pro machines. I feel like Apple has actually listened to people. I feel like everyone's saying that, but I feel like they really have. I've been looking forward to a proper pro machine for a couple of years now. Um, and yeah, let's just get into it. I'm talking too much. Anyway, uh, we'll start with the 14 inch first. So we'll move this to the side. We'll leave it there for now. Okay. Um, that's a good start. <laughs> So actually, I'm gonna move this off the table because I feel like it's distracting on the camera, um, but yeah. Okay, so this is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. If we look at the back on the bottom, you can actually see it says 16 gigabytes of unified memory, 512 SSD, 512 gigabyte SSD. And it also says, you know, eight core CPU, 14 core GPU. Um, yeah, let's get into the box. Okay. Ooh, okay. It's cold, cold aluminium. Um, before we get into the MacBook though, let's see what's inside quickly. So inside we have the new braided MagSafe cable. And again, wow, just, I'm so glad they brought back proper MagSafe. Um, even though I feel like I probably wouldn't even use it that much, but just traveling and stuff for a lot of people, MagSafe is just so much better than USB-C. And it is USB-C on the other end as well. So. You're, you don't have to get a whole new charging brick if your MagSafe charger becomes redundant or damaged or whatever else. Um, you can just plug this technically into any sort of power adapter if you really wanted to. But I think you do have to use the Apple 140 watt power adapter to get fast charging. If we remove this inside here, we have the actual charging brick itself. So this is the smaller power adapter. It is 67 watts. It's still pretty small for a 67 watt power adapter. Now, there are smaller ones out there but still, I'm just glad that it's a standard USB. There is a USB-C port here. So yeah, you're not sort of tied to any sort of proprietary system. Um, and the great thing is, even if you don't wanna use MagSafe, you can still use a standard USB-C charger into your MacBook. It works completely fine. And inside here, inside the documentation, we should have, well, we have, is it gonna come out? Is that it? Oh, no, that is it. Wait, 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 wait. We have something important and special here. We have black Apple stickers. I mean, this is probably the sole reason why you're gonna buy a MacBook, right? For these black stickers, right? <laughs> no, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. But yeah, pretty awesome to see black stickers, black Apple stickers. It's not a very common thing. You usually only get it with the very high-end models. Um, and it makes sense. These are pro versions of the MacBook. So it's good to see black Apple stickers. I'm not really a sticker person anyway. I couldn't care less about the stickers, but I know some people do. So I thought I'd share them regardless. Let's move it aside and let's bring the MacBook into frame. So definitely it feels heavier, definitely thicker as well, actually, from what we've seen so far. That is really nice. That is actually very nice to sort of, is it debossed or embossed? I can't remember. Debossed, embossed, I'm not sure. But yeah, the MacBook Pro logo on the bottom. And then we have the chunky feet as well. Now, these feet do raise the MacBook off the desk or whatever surface you're using it on, which makes sense because you have vents here and here. You need those vents to get air. So yeah, makes sense as to why it has that. Oh my God, I can't even get it. It's heavy. Oh, that looks... That looks pretty darn good. The space gray version, which is the one I have here, looks really good. It feels nice as well. The squared off design actually feels really nice. It feels like a really nice product. That aluminum sort of unibody chassis as well. I mean, I'm trying to flex it. That is not gonna flex. That is solid, very, very solid. Also one thick boy. Wow, <laughs> it's really thick. But anyway, the ports. 
So these are the things that I've just been looking forward to most. Here we have the MagSafe, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a 3.5 mm headphone jack, but it's the other side that gets me excited. So on this side, we now have HDMI port, HDMI 2.0, uh, Thunderbolt 4 port, and the SD card reader. Wow, the SD card reader. Well, I, don't know, I don't know why they took it away. I'm just so glad to see it back because the SD card reader is probably one of the most used ports for me. All of my videos, all of my photos, everything is shot on SD cards. And now just being able to plug it in straight to the MacBook without having to use the dongle, brilliant. That's exactly what I've been looking for. Mm -mm -mm. Lovely. Boots up straight away, nice to see. Um, we'll get rid of this cover here. Put that on the floor. Again, another great feature to see a proper function row of keys. Full height function row keys as well. Touch ID button as well, again, great. Um, the notch, I mean, you guys can probably see that notch already. It's noticeable, that's for sure. The notch is there, um, but technically you don't actually lose any screen estate compared to the previous models because the notch, even though the notch is there, the screen itself has actually been raised up. It's been given a bit of height. So now I think it's like 16 by 10 rather than 16 by nine. And yeah, like I think just like using the iPhone, you probably won't even notice the notch, especially because the Mac OS taskbar, mini bar, whatever it's called, just goes over the notch. It just blends in pretty well. And when you're using full screen apps, the notch also disappears. Um, but I can see why people are sort of hating on the notch. I can see why, you know, it's just a typical Apple thing to do. But where else are you gonna put the webcam? Where else are you gonna put the true time sensor, the ambient sensor, the light sensor, all these different things in there. Obviously it would have been nice to also see a face ID sensor, face ID sort of setup, because face ID makes the most sense on a MacBook, I think. That is the 14 inch model. Actually, I just forgot to mention, the keyboard itself now has a, a black sort of underlay, black sort of tray underneath. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. I like it. Um, we have the standard speakers and stuff. Let me actually go get my 13 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 MacBook Pro, and we can sort of compare them very quickly. Okay, so here we are. We have the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, and you can see the size difference. It's, um, it's not too much bigger, really. Um, let me move it over like so. Does it all fit in the frame? Yes, it does. Nice, okay, let's get it all lined up nicely. So yeah, you can see the size difference a little bit. It's not crazy different. Um, 14 inch screen, 13 inch screen. You can definitely see it's sort of like wider, longer. The thickness as well, it is definitely thicker, noticeably thicker. And it also doesn't have the tapered edge. So this is the M1 MacBook Pro and you can see it has a very much like a, a tapered edge. Um, but the new ones, the new MacBook Pro does not have that tapered edge. It's much more squared off. And I'm actually happy to have a more squared off design, even if it doesn't look as sort of sleek or, or sort of modern looking as the previous generation, I'm more than happy to take that, so sort of make that sacrifice in aesthetics to have a machine that's more powerful. Because at the end of the day, this is just a tool for me. This is just something that's gonna help me make more content, make videos, edit videos quicker, render videos quicker, edit photos quicker, make websites, development, all that sort of stuff. This is just a tool. It's not really meant to be the best looking thing in the world. Um, but even then, I'm not saying it's ugly, no way. I still think it looks like a fantastic machine and very solidly built. But yeah, that is it compared to the M1 MacBook Pro. Actually, let's get them side by side with the keyboards open so you can see the keyboard difference. Touch bar gone, of course. It looks like the speaker grills also are a little bit bigger on the new 14 inch which should hopefully mean better speaker performance. I know the 16 inch though, definitely has better speaker performance naturally. Interestingly, the trackpad, is it the same size? To my eye, the trackpad on the 13 inch model looks bigger than the 14 inch model. I think, I'm not completely sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe just a tad little bit bigger on the 13 inch. Anyway, um, let's get on to the 16 inch. So we'll move this aside. So hopefully this one is gonna open more cleanly. Okay, so 16 inch model this is. We'll get the MacBook itself out. But wow, this is heavy, <laughs> much heavier than the 13 inch, but like noticeably heavier. Wow, okay. Um, inside we get 
pretty much exactly the same other than the actual charging bit. The charging bit in this one is bigger because it is a, yes, this is a 140 watt power adapter charging brick. Um, so yeah, it's quite a bit bigger than the 100 watt one, but still not that big, you know, it fits into the into the palm of my hands, no problem. Um, but yeah, put that away. Like I said, everything else is pretty much exactly the same. So we won't go through the box again. Um, we'll put the box aside and we'll get into this MacBook itself. Okay, yeah, it, it feels heavy. Definitely feels heavy and big. Yeah, everything else is pretty much exactly the same, apart from size, of course. That screen is massive. Wow. <laughs> I haven't used a 16 inch MacBook Pro or 15 inch MacBook Pro in, in a while, so um, this just seems so big compared to the 14 inch. It feels like a huge screen. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same <laughs> as the 13 inch. I'll get the 13 inch out again. Um, so you can see the size difference. Obviously with the 16 inch, the speakers are going to be better because there's bigger surface area and the speakers can also be bigger. Um, so if you're looking for good speakers, you're gonna have to go with the 16 inch. But I'm sure most people who are using this for sort of pro workflows are using proper headphones or something. So yeah, I, I, I feel like the speakers are just like a backup, right? That's the whole point of them. But here is a size difference of the two. You can see that size difference. You can see the 14 inch really is so much smaller and just much more, much lighter as well. Um, much, much lighter. So for me personally, I'll be using the 14 inch, mainly because I sort of carry my laptop between work and home a lot. Don't really want to be carrying around a big 16 inch. And I usually have my laptop connected up to an external display whether that be the LG 5K display or the Pro Display XDR. I usually switch between the two monitors. The Pro Display XDR is here at the office and the LG 5K is at home. So yeah, even though these have the amazing 120 Hertz ProMotion displays or whatever, I, you know, I'm not gonna be taking advantage of them, unfortunately. <laughs> um, what I might do though is, I might actually use it as like a dual setup. So usually I just use the one monitor and I have my MacBook in clamshell mode. I might actually end up using it in an open format. So I have the MacBook side, side by side next to the monitor and use them both at the same time, the MacBook display and the Pro Display XDR or the LG 5K display. Um, so I've actually ordered a 14 inch uh, MacBook Pro with two terabyte SSD, 32 gigabytes of RAM and the M1 Max chip, not the top of the line M1 Max chip, the one just below the top of the line one, mainly because I don't actually need the power of the top of the line model and I just thought, you know, I would still like the M1 Max just to future-proof myself a little bit for editing videos, editing photos and things like that. So that's why I went for the sort of base model M1 Max model, you could say. Um, and then I upgraded the RAM and the, and the SSD, of course. So if we look at some of the other specs that they have, um, actually pricing, pricing is a big one. This 14 inch one, the base model 14 inch eight core starts at $2,000, which is a lot of money. I'm not going to deny that it is a lot of money. And it's actually a model I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend jumping up to the 10 core model because you're not going to see a massive difference between the eight core M1 Pro and the sort of just the standard M1 from the MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. I feel like you're not gonna see a big difference. So I would recommend jumping up one step. But the pricing for these is definitely not targeted at the average consumer. People are saying they're expensive and it makes sense as to why they're expensive because they are primarily targeted at pro users, people who actually make money from using these machines, people who actually make content, people who actually do design art, um, video editing, photo editing, coding, development, you know, where they make money from their job. They make money from having these sort of powerful machines. So if you're looking for value for money, go for the M1 MacBook Air, go for the M1 MacBook Pro. Those are incredible value and the ones I would recommend to most people. My M1 MacBook Pro that I have handled most of my workflow already completely fine and I'm editing highly compressed 4K videos from the overhead camera and the camera in front of me. It just about handles it. It does stutter now and again, but it just about handles it. And I think if it can handle that sort of workflow, it will handle most other things people throw at it. These machines are primarily targeted at people who are doing just a bit more than I am and are looking for faster workflows, faster rendering, faster image processing, all these different things. Um, that's who these machines are targeted for. So yeah, spending like a couple of grand, two or three grand on a machine for me is well worth it. That's a good investment. For the average person, probably not. 
Anyway, that's just enough of me rambling. I will have a review coming soon of the 14 inch, um, maybe after a month or so, because I really wanna use it for my workflow and everything, see what it's like, see how much more of a benefit I'm getting compared to the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. I'll do some sort of like render tests and stuff like that because benchmarking stuff is all great and whatever, but I think when it comes to actual real world use case, that's where it really matters. So yeah, make sure to subscribe so you can be notified when I get that re review out and published. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.